Hi, my name is Brian and I'm the 3D print creator and in this review, well, this is the review of the Orter Obsidian 3D printer. Uh, a 3D printer that I received from Gearbest a few months ago, but that printer that I received, well, it was damaged completely due to shipping. And uh, therefore they sent me a new printer and that just arrived and, well, I've put it together and I started testing with it. Now, you have to know that I didn't make a video of the whole assembly because this video is already made by the people of Orter and they have it on their channel. Now, when we take a look at this printer, well, you will see that there are some well, pretty strange features uh, that will need a little explanation. For example, when you try to turn on the power of this printer, well, nothing happens. And this is the first very good thing uh, that I really like about this printer. Because you have to push a second power button to operate a relay and that relay turns on the printer. Now, the benefits of using a relay to turn on the printer is that the relay can also be used to turn off the printer. So, for example, if you put the right G-code command in your end G-code, then the G-code can turn off the printer automatically. And this is while you are in bed sleeping. So, this is a thing that is new to me. I didn't see it on any other, uh, other printer before and I really love it. I think this is a very good thing on this 3D printer. Now, there is also a filament runout sensor, which uh, yeah, a lot of printers have. And on the back of the printer, we find two very well made, uh, very sturdy anti-backlash couplers. Uh, those are to, to uh, handle the Z-axis and this printer has a dual Z-axis drive. And uh, well, those anti-backlashes are the best I've seen yet so far. Another thing that I really like about this printer is the proximity sensor. Uh, there is a proximity sensor that can uh, detect metal and therefore it can detect the metal print bed. And this can be used to level the printer. And not only to level it, but to make a mesh level of that whole bed. So if the bed is, uh, yeah, is a little bit warped or not perfectly straight, uh, then the printer can uh, make a mesh, mesh out of it. And uh, this mesh can be used to make a perfect first layer. And therefore, well, I, I love automatic bed leveling with mesh level uh, because this is really the best you can get. Now, you have to know that I had a little problem with this printer. Uh, well, two little problems. At first, when I received this printer, the uh, proximity sensor, which is held by a 3D printed part, well, that 3D printed part was broken already. Now, this isn't really a problem because the other side of the part really holds it. But, uh, well, I have to reprint this part and I think that when you receive a printer like this, it should be, well, completely okay. So, this was the first problem. Now, the second problem was a bit of a bigger problem. I tried leveling the bed and uh, when I did, I put the x-axis as low as possible and then I tried to raise the bed as high as possible so that there would be almost no gap between the nozzle and the bed. But no matter what I did, there was a two and a half millimeter gap between the nozzle and the bed. And well, I tried everything, but uh, I couldn't go any lower with the x-axis gantry uh, because, well, it was on its definite ends. The, the anti-backlash couplers were leaning on, their, uh, on the motors that were uh, on the z-axis. And therefore, I couldn't get any lower with this z-axis. Now, also, the bed couldn't get any higher because of the springs. And I think those springs were shorter than they were in my other 3D printer that I received from them. And, uh, well, I didn't want to use parts of that other 3D printer, which was severely damaged. And therefore, I tried making another solution, and that solution I made with my uh, uh, laser cutter, which is also an Orter laser cutter. Uh, and this was, uh, well, I, I made spacers out of 3 mm thick plywood. Now, those spacers were placed under the springs, 
And uh, then when I connected the bed and, uh, well, turned it on, then I could really level the bed at the level it had to be. So this was the solution to a problem that shouldn't have been there. Now, I have to say that after I did this and I did the mesh bed leveling, I got great results from this printer. Uh, now you have to know that I haven't tweaked anything on my slicer yet, uh, yet the prints are really exceptional good. If you take a look for example at this, uh, this test print, then you can see that the overhangs of 60 degrees are really perfect. Now the overhangs that are on uh, 70 degrees or 75 degrees, there you can see that there is a bit of a problem with the overhangs, <coughs> but still they are printed perfectly. And also the 80 degrees overhang, well, it's there. It's not as nice as it, well, as it could be when uh, supports would have been printed, but hey, it, it's a 80 degree overhang and I think it's flawless. So that's it for the overhangs. Then take a look at the stringing. Uh, well, there is absolutely no stringing. Uh, when I use the printer directly out of the box, I put some things in the slicer, slice it and print it. And well, you can see what happens here. There is no stringing at all. Dimensionally, everything is perfectly. Uh, this printer is really tweaked very, very well. And uh, well, every uh, measurement comes out exactly the way it should be. And also the uh, 10 millimeter and 100 millimeter filament test that I did gave great results and used the exact amount of filament that they should use. Now I printed a Benchy and uh, I have to say that for a non-tweaked printer right out of the box this is a pretty darn good Benchy. Of course it can be a little better uh, and therefore we have to yeah, tweak some settings in the slicer but this is directly out of the box and well, I think this is a great result from a great printer. Now, what do I think of this printer for beginners? I, I have a doubt. Um, the problem is that you have to assemble this printer yourself and uh, it's a very easy assembly. I think everyone that can build an IKEA uh, a cupboard can, can also build this printer, really, it, it's very, very simple. Except for one thing, and these are the flat cables or ribbon cables that they use. Um, the connectors where you have to put in those flat cables or ribbon cables uh, are the wrong connectors. You have to put some force on them uh, while you can't, uh, you can't access them very, very nice. And therefore, it's very, very plausible that you do it wrong and that you well, break your cables before you ever use the printer. And uh, there is a very simple solution to this, and I think Orter should do this, uh, because there are other connectors with a clamp. And you can open the clamp, you can put in the cable and close the clamp. And then they will be very good connected. And uh, well, it's very easy to, to use. So yeah, I think this is a printer that can be used by beginners very easy. Uh, it's, it's a very good printer for them. Uh, but I have to say that assembling the printer, well, when you go to assemble the, the flat cables, ask some help of someone that is a little bit more experienced in doing so. Because if you damage them, well, you won't be able to yeah, to use them anymore and you will have to wait for new cables. Now that said, I really love the quality of this printer. I really love how it turned out, um, how the, the, the prints turned out. And yeah, I think it's a great printer for a very low price. And therefore, well, my recommendation is that uh, if you want to have a new printer and the measurements of this printer are, well, the measurements that you could use, then this is a very good printer to consider. If you like this review, please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel. There will be a bigger review of this printer coming a little bit later. I will have uh, more time for that review. Uh, then I can try more types of filament. I can try more, uh, well, difficult things on the printer. 
And uh, when that uh, review is out, you will be notified if you have clicked that bell notification button because then you will be notified every time I make a new video. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys next time. Bye bye.